Water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. This line is from a poem written by Taylor Coldridge. The author is discussing how there is only so much water we, as humans, can utilize in our everyday lives. Here in Canada, it is commonly stated that we have 20% of the world's fresh drinkable water supply. This isn't totally accurate, however, because only 7% of our water supply comes from sources which are considered renewable. But isn't all water renewable, I hear you ask? Surprisingly, not all water is considered renewable, because the cycle takes too long to produce more water in these areas, so we don't see replenishment in these places for a countless number of years. It should also be noted that over 50% of our water supply ends up draining into the Arctic Ocean and the Hudson Bay. This water can't be obtained by 85% of Canada's population who reside near the U.S. border. But water can't be that important, right? Wrong! Water is essential to life. According to the National Health Service, NHS in Scotland, two-thirds of the human body is made up of water. If we don't consume enough water, a condition known as dehydration is experienced. In extreme cases where this condition is untreated, the patient will get an infection and die. However, milder symptoms include pain when urinating and a sense of dryness around the lips or eyes. Other symptoms include thirst, headaches, unusual tiredness, and lack of concentration. Looking at your urine can monitor your level of hydration. A general rule is the darker it is in color, the less hydrated you are. It is recommended by the NHS to drink at minimum about six to eight mugs of water a day. It isn't just drinking either. We use water for a variety of other reasons. According to an infographic by Statistics Canada, in 2017, Canadians used, on average, 220 litres per capita per day. In addition to drinking water, usage can be attributed to cooking, cleaning, hygiene, and recreation, swimming pools. While many of these uses are valid and are indeed necessary for our society to function, one listed use of water that could be prevented is that of leaky pipes and fixtures. We don't just use water in our homes either. Water is used in many industries and schools. The United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, point out on their website that another form of water usage is in the agriculture sector. They specifically highlight the use of water in animal feeding operations. Other areas which use water are in medical treatment such as hydrotherapy and dental procedures. Some animals make their homes in or near water in wetlands. Animals in these areas range from single-celled organisms, which can be only seen under a microscope, called protozoa, to those like giant moose. Over 100 species of birds make the wetlands home. What can happen if our water supply were to become contaminated? Unfortunately, there are real-world examples of contaminated water, and the effects can be devastating. The city of North Battleford had first-hand experience with contaminated water in 2001. A parasite known as Cryptosporidium, sometimes referred to by as Crypto, entered the water supply. This pesky parasite causes sickness, and the most common symptom is diarrhea. It is microscopic, and the CDC states that swallowing as few as 10 crypto germs can cause infection. In North Battleford, it is estimated that 7,000 people got ill, which accounts for about half the population. The issue came to light when a patient of Dr. Jeffrey Lipset had their lab results come back positive for the parasite. Dr. Lipset discovered that all the pharmacies across the city couldn't keep up with the demand for one product in particular, anti-diarrhea medication. It was flying off the shelves. What was the connection between these cases? It was that the people who were sick all used municipal tap water. However, despite this discovery, 
It was the Easter weekend, and therefore, records and data couldn't be accessed readily. This led to a delay in finding out if there really was merit in these concerns about the city's water supply. In fact, by the time data was collected, another 100 people had ended up in the ER complaining about diarrhea. A boil water notice was eventually put in place, which lasted three months. The Saskatoon Star Phoenix says in an article from that time period that people in the area stood in lines a kilometer long to get bottled water. Restaurants used disposable cutlery, and public drinking fountains were cordoned off with garbage bags draped on top of them. It wasn't just North Battleford that was impacted by this issue, as there were cases of people who were visiting North Battleford and drank the water and then returned home. Cases spread as far as Alberta and Manitoba. Thankfully, in this particular instance, no one died. Three patients were initially attributed to having died as a result of the outbreak, but two of the people were found to have never been infected in the first place, and in the final case, they found there was additional complications, and so it wasn't the main cause of death. But this isn't always the case, as the Star Phoenix article briefly mentions that one year earlier, 2000, in Walkerton, Ontario, water contamination did cause death. The medical journal titled Kidney International Supplements states that the total number of deaths in Walkerton attributed to their outbreak was seven. By July of 2001, then-Mayor of North Battleford, Wayne Ray, was at a press conference quoted as saying, Good water, after drinking some tap water from a small styrofoam cup. But the damage had been done, and although the issue is no longer at the forefront of our lives, many residents, both current and former, still recall the event. But that was over 20 years ago. Surely water contamination can't happen today? Actually, it can, and it does happen. Ikaluit Nunavut has recently issued a boil water notice as the hydrocarbon known as diesel fuel had contaminated their water supply. The BBC interviewed a resident who said that the smell from his kitchen sink was the first indicator that something was amiss in the city's water. Due to the high concentration, even boiling could not remove such contamination. This led to a stronger do not consume, sometimes known as a do not drink order being issued. The hospital in the city, which is the only one in the territory, was forced to cancel any surgeries which didn't involve using single-use instruments. The CBC said that this is due to the fact that they sterilized their medical equipment using tap water. CTV explains that residents found themselves collecting water in jugs from a local river and that shipments of water were flown in from Canada south. By December, the city removed their order. As of this writing, January 2022, the smell came back, and it has been found that there is still residue in the water system. Health advice at the moment is to boil water. Councillor Kyle Shepherd told New Nutsiak News that having any hydrocarbons in the water is bad, but the traces found were not a dangerous amount. 50 micrograms per liter, which is below ca the Canadian government's water safety guidelines of 390 micrograms per liter. There are no estimates as to when the city's water will be safe to drink straight from the tap. Still not convinced? How would you like to never have clean water come out of your tap? This is the reality for many Canadians who live on reserves. According to Indigenous Services Canada, as of January 7, 2022, there were 37 long-term drinking water advisories in for 29 First Nations communities. Six of these advisories are in five Saskatchewan First Nations communities. TVO explained in September of 2021 that one of the major issues is that although it is frequently stated that over 100 advisories have been lifted, they usually get superseded by another short-term advisory. Many people get their water supply from wells, and they are not counted by the government system. The Government of Canada Department then called Indian and Northern Affairs Canada in 1995 made the commitment that every reserve would have clean water by the year 2004. Eighteen years past that deadline, and this is not the case. But what exactly is a drinking water advisory? 
There are three levels. The most known level is that of a boil water advisory. TVO explains that this usually indicates that the water is contaminated with bacteria, parasites, or viruses. They require water to be brought to a rolling boil for at least a minute and then cooled before drinking or otherwise consuming. For example, in ice cubes or through cooking. The next level is that of a do not consume order, which means that the water must not be ingested, but an adult or older child may bathe in the water. The final level of advisory is a do not use order. This is as it sounds. The water may not be used for any purpose. Karana Dali Starna, a PhD candidate at Queen's University Department of Environment, told TVO that not every drinking water advisory is a boil water advisory. She advised that although politicians sometimes use the terms boil water advisory and drinking water advisory interchangeably, this terminology should not be used in this way. In Saskatchewan, the Water Works and Sewage Works regulations protect water. This legislation provides for enforceable parameters as to what levels are considered generally safe. Regular testing occurs by the Water Security Agency, and the results are available to the general public through an online portal called Sask H2O. Data available dates back to 1970. Now that we've seen why water is important and what can happen if it isn't clean, this begs the question, what can we as individuals do in order to keep our water clean? The New York Department of Environment advises that one thing people can do if they do their own oil changes is to ensure used oil is disposed of at the appropriate facility. Never let it go on the street or pour it down a storm drain. Another car-related suggestion is that if you wash your own car, do so on the lawn so that the dirty water won't accidentally flow into a drain. Avoid using lawn fertilizers containing phosphorus. Don't flush anything that doesn't directly come out of your body. Items such as cleaners, medicines, these may be brought to a pharmacy for disposal, beauty products, or feminine hygiene products do not belong in your toilet. The Natural Resources Defense Council phrases it this way. Remember, your toilet is not a trash can. Along the same lines, don't pour fats or grease down the drain. Water is a precious resource. We need it to live, and we only have so much. So please, be an advocate for clean water and be responsible with it.